What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to this new episode of Restorations with Vic. For today's project, we're gonna be bringing these original 1997 Flint 13s back to life. As you can see right now, they're pretty trashed all around. We have separation on the toe box. The shoe's pretty stiff for being 22 years old. Over here on the toe boxes, it's scuffed up, scratched up. On this shoe, it's been painted over. We have a lot of yellowing all over the pods. As you can see over here, somebody tried cleaning it in the past. The suede is really shaggy. You can't even shave it. If you try shaving it, it just gets worse. So on this shoe, when we clean it, we're gonna wanna be extra careful and brush only in one direction. That way we don't cause more damage to the shoe. We got some work ahead of us guys, so let's get to it. So the first step we're gonna do with this restoration is pop in our adjustable rejuvenator shoe tree. Um, these shoes did not come with shoelaces, so there's nothing to remove. Luckily, I do have some replacement Flint 13 laces um, that I just had laying around. So like I mentioned in older videos, you do not want to put old shoes in the washing machine. They will get destroyed. This shoe is from 1997, making it 22 years old. I have a good feeling if I put it in the washing machine, the whole soil is going to separate. Um, right now, we only have separation in the front. Nothing in the back is separating. So we're going to stick with our three brush, four ounce kit, pop it open. We're only going to squirt one or two squirts. Usually I do two squirts. Um, this stuff is highly concentrated. Two squirts is all you need. Two squirts. We're going to want to start off by using our soft bristle brush to clean up the uppers. I love using the soft bristle brush because it creates the most soap, the most bubbles, the most suds. Um, it gets the clean going, it loosens up the dirt all around. Once we're done with this soft bristle brush, we'll move on to the next one. All right, let's go ahead and pull out our shoe tree. This shoe is super dirty. It is 22 years old. I don't know how many times it's been clean in those 22 years. So we wanna get every inch of this shoe clean. We're not gonna put the shoe in the washing machine. So we are gonna do a lot of scrubbing on the inside, a lot of scrubbing on the insoles. Every corner of the shoe is gonna get scrubbed. Um, once it's fully scrubbed, we're gonna go to the sink, rinse it out as much as possible, and then we're gonna let them dry. All right, so I think the insides are good. Let's start focusing on the outsides. All right, so I think the leather looks good. Same thing for the 3M mesh area. Um, I'm not sure how the suede looks, so what we're gonna do is grab one of our towels, pat it down to see if it still needs more work or if I can just move on to clean the soles. All right, so overall, they look pretty good. Um, I do want to mention the suede is getting a little shaggy, even from using the stop bristle brush. It's not the brush's fault. It's just the type of suede that is on the original 13s and 14s. Um, so what we're, what we're gonna want to do to not make the suede worse is brush in one direction. Um, I was brushing the circular motion. So instead, we're gonna brush um, one way. Hopefully that helps calm the suede a bit. All right, so suede's look good. No more stains. Uppers are pretty much done. We're not gonna be using the uh, all-purpose brush, but what we are gonna need is a sole brush to give these soles a cleaning. We're gonna focus on the pods now. For this step, we're gonna wanna be careful. You don't wanna scrub carelessly, because if you scrub carelessly, you're gonna scrub the suede and you're definitely gonna make it shaggy and you're gonna ruin it. So just be very careful when you're scrubbing. Just focus on the rubber pods. Make sure you don't scrub the suede. All 
right guys, so that's about it for the cleaning. The last step I gotta do is give this dirty insole a quick cleaning using a saw bristle brush. You know what's kind of crazy to me? The new retros, you know, like the little jump man on the insoles. After the first wear, it comes right off. These shoes I've been worn a million times, I'm assuming. And the sticker on the insole, you know, the Jordan jump man is fully visible. Um, I'll show you guys. Check it out. That's quality right there. They don't make it like that no more. The originals, they use good stuff on it. You know, the stuff they use now, damn shame. All right, let's put this back in here. Let's put our shoe tree back in the shoe. Now let's go to our sink. Rinse this bad boy out and let it dry for a good 24 hours. Come back so we can move on to removing the yellowing on the soles. Shoe is fully dry guys, check it out. As you can see, it's pretty darn clean for just using a three brush, four ounce kit, no washing machine needed. Overall, the shoe looks pretty good for it being 22 years old. The toe box looks really good. It has its original shape, thanks to the shoe tree. The only thing that's a little bit discolored is a suede. Like I did mention, the suede is very delicate on these OGs. It gets very shaggy very quickly, and in some areas it's lighter than others. Um, on the original Flint 13s, the suede is a light color. Um, not this light, and it's not supposed to be a mixture of light and dark. So what we're gonna do later on in the video is kind of brush it one direction, you know, try to get some of that color back. Overall, it looks really good. So let's move on to the next step, which is removing the yellowing off the pods. We're gonna use some Salon Care 40. Ceram wrap and my indoor setup. All right guys, so let's go ahead and put the ceram wrap. The reason why we use ceram wrap whenever we're uh, removing yellowing is so the stuff won't dry. And on this shoe specifically, since the pods are surrounded by suede, um, you don't want to smear the, the Salon Care 40. So you're going to want to be very careful when putting the ceram wrap. You just kind of want to drop it over it. You don't want to move it around because it's going to spread the Salon Care 40 onto the suede and that's not going to come off. Just like that. At the same time, when you're moving it to your indoor setup, careful not to move the ceram wrap because I've done that before and it, and it sucks. Safety first. All right, so we're gonna let it cook for about an hour and then we're gonna flip it to the other side and then move on to the next step. We got the yelling off both sides of the shoe. Didn't take too long. If you guys ever have an issue where the yelling comes back, I know for this shoe, I'm almost guaranteeing within a couple months, the yelling is gonna come back to the pods. That's because I only did one session. If you guys had that problem where the yelling just comes back, what you're probably doing wrong is not doing enough sessions. Even if the soles go back to white right away, do another two sessions just to kind of make sure that white stays, that might solve your problems. So moving on to this restoration, the next step we're gonna move on to is the glue job. The first step we're gonna do is remove all the old factory glue. So for this step, we're gonna be using cotton balls and acetone. We're gonna get deep in there, make sure all that old stuff is out. Glue is fully off the soles, 
painfully out the toe box. We got it down to the bare leather, as you can see. Looks good, we'll paint that later. Now, we're gonna apply some bar cement glue to the separation. Where we're gonna lay down the glue is this area right here. We're gonna lay down a nice, thin, even coat. Let it cure for a few minutes, and then we'll clamp it together. All right guys, so we got this side fully glued, this side as well. Looks really good. I don't wanna press on it just yet. The glue is still not fully dried, but it's clamped, it's good to go. I'm really happy about that. Um, the last part we gotta glue, which is in my opinion the easiest part, is this front toe piece. What we're gonna do is the exact same thing. Apply a nice even coat all around. Let it cure for seven minutes, then we'll clamp it together, and that should be good to go for the glue job. All right, seven minutes are up. Same exact thing as the other two portions. We're gonna just clamp it together. All right, alignment looks pretty good so far. No glue where there shouldn't be. All we gotta do now is let the full thing fully cure so we can move on to painting the toe box and wrap up this video. Now that we're all done with the glue job, we're gonna move on to the last step, which is repainting the toe boxes. This step is fairly easy. We're not gonna use any tape, we're just gonna freehand it. It's a lot easier, you don't have to waste time taping. Usually Jordans, straight out the factory, have a nice matte finish. So that's why we're gonna be using and there's flat white paint for this situation. We'll be using an angular brush to apply it and a heat gun to dry the paint in between coats. So with white paint, in general, it takes forever to lay down, but the key to a nice, clean finish is nice, thin, even coats all around. Don't cake the paint on. It's gonna look super sloppy. You're gonna have brush strokes all around, and you're just not gonna be happy with it, Joe. So just apply nice, thin, even coats all around. Really easy, just be patient with it. The box is all done guys, take a look at that. Nice and clean, no paint where there shouldn't be. Nice and smooth. The white actually looks pretty close to the tongue, it doesn't stand out, it's not too bright. It's all thanks to mixing with a little bit of cream. So now in order to protect this fully painted uh, toe box, we gotta go outside, spray it with some Krylon, and that finish. Nothing too crazy. What we're gonna do next is try to darken up the suede. I know it's a little bit ruggish, shaggy looking. Nothing I can do about that. If I try shaving it, it's just gonna keep on coming, keep on coming worse. So what we're gonna try to do to at least darken uh, some areas up is go outside, spray with some almighty rejuvenator mink oil. We're gonna apply a few even coats, brush it in with our soft bristle brush, keep on reapplying. We'll see what happens. Hopefully it looks better, we'll see. When it comes to the mink oil, guys, it's a process. The first coat's not gonna do the job. You gotta reapply it, um, brush it in, apply it. That's how you get the rich results. Um, like I said, I don't know if we're gonna get the same results on this shoe. The suede is pretty damaged. Um, it's faded, it's spotty, it's furry. So we're just trying to make it look a little bit better. We'll see. I did mention in the beginning of the video, the suede on the originals already has a light color. It's not dark like the retros. Um, but we're just trying to make it look a little bit better, guys. Definitely looks a lot better. Let's go inside. That's the stuff. The shoe didn't go in the washing machine, so it needs that scent. 
that was the very last step, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys found it informative. That's what I was going for. I was hoping I could deliver some information that you guys don't know of already. Um, Cause that's, at the end of the day, that's what these videos are for. Check out the after, guys. Look how beautiful the shoe came out. Overall, considering how old the shoe is and considering how beat the shoe was. The suede definitely looks a lot better thanks to the mink oil. The shoe has its original shape. There's no separation. The toe box looks good. Overall, once the shoe is fully done, the full pair will be ready to be worn. So now let's circle back to exactly what I did to make this restoration happen. The very first thing I did was give the shoe a proper full deep clean using Rejuvenator's 3 brush 4 ounce kit. Once that was fully done, I moved on to prepping the shoe, getting it ready for the re-glue. The re-glue came out better than I expected. I thought the suede was going to get really furry when I applied tape. It didn't get too much worse. Um, alignment was perfect all around, as you can see. Perfect. No complaints. I'm really happy about this glue job. And same thing about the toe box. No tape was used to strip it. Thankfully, I didn't get any paint on the suede or the blue mesh areas. Everything overall came out really well. Creasing's out. And the last step I did to wrap up this full restoration was spraying it with our Rejuvenator Almighty Mink Oil. In the beginning, after the full cleaning, the suede was very discolored. It was dark in some areas. It was faded also. The Almighty Mink Oil brought a lot of that color back. It's also a lot smoother. It's not as shaggy thanks to combing it with a soft bristle brush. One thing I did want to show you guys how to do was how to defog the hologram. The only thing you can do is grab a heat gun, go over it a few times, and you'll see it turn super clear right away, crispy, brand new. The only problem is it doesn't stay that way. Within a day or a couple days, it goes back to its fogged up way. Um, but I'll show you guys anyway, just so you guys can know. still clear so that's gonna wrap it up guys if you need to purchase any of our rejuvenator products three brush four ounce kit bowls towel almighty mink oil deodorizer head over to rejuvenator.com check out the description below to save some bucks using my promo code hope you guys enjoy this video guys this is Vic I'll see you guys next Monday